Okay, now, I'm going to skip through these things, and now I'm going to remind you that we then went on into Dijkstra to find shortest paths. I, I realize this material doesn't present well on PowerPoint. It's a lot better on a whiteboard. Uh, yeah, it's one of the limitations of, of the setup of this, this class, but I, I hope it is now clear to you that what is the basic flow of Dijkstra. And for all you computer science types, you should recognize that Dijkstra is the classic instance of a breadth first search. That you don't rush off to find the shortest path, you look locally. So you start from the source, from the root vertex, and you find all the short paths that you can, which are at length one. You take the closest one of those, and before you move on, you do a scan from that node. That's the basic principle of breadth first search as opposed to depth first search. And many people talk about it as first label, first scan, First one that you label as permanent, that's where you do the scan from. Okay. So again, we went through an implementation, but I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to look on the test archive and look for instances where Dijkstra's problem is given to you both in graphical form and also in matrix form. So in a matrix form, you're simply given a matrix in which the IJ entry represents the distance from edge from vertex I to vertex J. In general, uh, the IJ entry and the JI entry can be quite different. No, because that rep the IJ entry represents an edge this way, and the JI entry represents an edge coming back. Can go, can have markedly different one. The example that I gave here in, in conjunction with this picture uh, is only an oriented graph. There are no edges over and edges back. So just a, a simple one, but you, the algorithm doesn't care. Okay, now it's important in you reading through these slides is that you watch where the scan occurs from. So you label your root node 1 as permanent first and you scan from the root node. There's a question in the back. Can we apply this algorithm to I'm having a hard time hearing you. Can we apply this algorithm to too? I still can't hear. Can we apply this algorithm to Well, um, Yes. Okay. Just pretend that every edge can be walked on in either direction. You know, if, if you just have a, an edge that has weight 7, and you can go this way and this way, you put into your picture an edge over a weight 7 and an edge back of weight 7. So you make it into a directed graph. It would be a symmetric matrix. Was that question, that was a good question. Was the question clear to everyone? She asked, can you apply Dijkstra's algorithm to an undirected graph? And the answer is yes. You just put in for every edge a directed edge over and a directed edge back, and they have the same weight, meaning you can walk on an edge in any direction you choose. And it's the same, same price. OK? All right, so you label the vertex 1 first, and you scan from vertex 1 looking for improvements. Now, improvements are just one edges. And then the next step is you take the cheapest one and it, that's not permanent, and that's vertex 6. So you mark 6 as permanent, and then you scan from vertex 6. So you look from 6 to temporary 2, 6 to temporary 3, 6 to temporary 4, 6 to temporary 5, 6 to 7, 6 to 8, to see if 
There is a better way to get to any of those vertices by going to vertex 6 first and then going on to that vertex. So, so the one improvement in this first iteration is for vertex 4. The old 4 was infinite. You didn't, you didn't know how to get there. Now you can get there because you can go to 6 at a cost of 24, and you can go from 6 to 4 at a cost of 120. Now, that date is not on this slide. You have to, you have, to have this picture in your hand. It, it works a lot better if you have this picture physically, if you print this page, so you can walk yourself through those next slides. Okay? So Dijkstra's algorithm, you continue to scan doing a breadth first search. Each time you scan, you take the least temporary vertex and make it permanent and do a scan from that vertex. And each, with each step, you get a new vertex that's marked permanent. Okay, so I'm not going to go back through all of these slides. Uh, and then the algorithm halts, and we want to prove that the information at the halting point is correct in every instance. 